Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome to Universe Sandbox. This is a game, well, not really a game, once again, but this is a program that a lot of you have been suggesting to me for quite a while, because, as you know, I am very much into the amateur astronomy and science and space exploration, and Universe Sandbox is exactly centered around that. Uh, it is the product of one man, much like another game we're familiar with, Minecraft, but Dan Dixon apparently has been working on this type of software for about 15 years and finally came out with version 1.0 of Universe Sandbox back in 2008 and more recently version 2.0 in 2010 and recently I picked this up on Steam during the winter Steam sale for about five bucks. Uh, at which point the next week it went on down to three bucks, but uh, that's the way things go with Steam usually, right? Uh, but anyway, it's a really cool program, uh, much along the same lines as Celestia, Space Engine, uh, NASA, Eyes on the Solar System, which are all programs I've shown you before on my channel. I will put links in this video's description to those videos if you want to check those out and compare the differences. Uh, the main difference between Universe Sandbox and those is that this is more of a physics sandbox that allows you to make changes to, say, the universe or the solar system that we're looking at right here. Uh, obviously, you see we have the, the sun in the middle, all the planets, there's Earth. I believe I can probably zoom in on Earth. Yes, I can. And you got a whole bunch of other particles out there, as the asteroid belt and other things. Uh, but this allows you to edit and change the mass uh, the trajectories of items, you can collide items together, um, and it's it's kind of cool in that respect. It's not as realistic, say, as Celestia Space Engine or some of the uh, simulators, whereas those programs don't allow you to edit or change, uh, you know, the mass of Earth or, or other things like that. Uh, those are more about being scientifically accurate, and the only thing you can really change in those situations is the, the speed of time, fast fast forward or reverse or whatever. Uh, but uh, so that each of these programs have their own little niches that they that they each do very well. But I've been playing around in Universe Sandbox for about an hour and I can't say that I know everything about it. So what I'm going to do actually is go through the tutorial here on uh, kind of it, it gives a good overview of the different type of things you could do in Universe Sandbox and then maybe I'll take a few minutes to play around in my own uh, simulation, I guess. But uh, yeah, here's the uh, the basic solar system here, all the way out. I can zoom all the way out and see all the things out there in the Coupier belt. Uh, everything from uh, Eris and Sedna and uh, Neptune. And there's Pluto. I was looking for it. See, it's a dwarf planet, not an actual planet. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to actually load the... got a menu on the side here. I can go to where is it? I want to look at. Jeez. Some things to do. A short walkthrough. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, welcome to Universe Sandbox. Continue. Uh, this is our solar system. We've already seen that. Uh, it it didn't have the. I did it have the moon of the Earth. I thought it did. I couldn't see it, but. Uh, uh, this simulation features the largest 32 non-moons. Okay, so this simulation doesn't include the moons. And that's one of the differences with Universe Sandbox. Like right now we're just looking at a solar system simulation. We can't continually zoom out and keep zooming out to be, say, outside of the galaxy like we could in Celestia Space Engine uh, programs like that. The only thing that's being simulated right now is what is within our solar system. And that obviously makes sense if you start to bring in all the math of the the mass of other stars and the Milky Way galaxy, it would just be way too much for any desktop computer to handle. Uh, so that's what this simulation is going on right now. Uh, I just zoomed in and out, thank you very much. And zoom in, yes, yes, it's next. Click and jack, drag the mouse, yeah, you can rotate your view, uh, much like you can in many of the other games, or not games, simulators, <laughs> universe simulators. Uh, now let's check out Saturn. And as you can see here, it's a pretty accurate representation of Saturn, although the rings, instead of being displayed as like a continuous texture, uh, the rings are kind of just broke down into a very limited number of particles, uh, which are all gravitationally bound to, to what the, the mass that we have here, 95.2 Earths, the mass of Saturn. Uh, so this is all being kind of rendered and uh, calculated in real time, uh, along with 
Saturn's 60 plus moons we have going around. Uh, I can click on any moon. Let's click on Titan, and then you can get all the information about Titan. Uh, right here you can edit information about Titan, so say you wanted to uh, make the mass much bigger, you can see what it does, and I think we're going to do that in the next few minutes here. Click on the selected moon. Yes, I did that. Thank you. Okay. Let's show you the controls. Over, over, okay, yeah, there's a bunch of controls down here. <clears throat> I'll be looking at these in a second. Uh, there's obviously edit mode, uh, a chart mode, which we're going to look at. Click on chart mode. This is kind of cool that the other programs don't have. It allows you to compare, like, your, your home planet, or you can even go to the sun and do this, and then you can compare the sizes and kind of line them all up of all of its kind of moons, or in the case if you were to choose the sun, you could line up all the planets in terms of their size. So you can see Titan is actually pretty large even compared to Saturn. Uh, and then going on down the line to 60 some odd moons of Saturn right there. It's kind of a cool thing that the other programs don't have. Uh, you can switch right back to the live view. And now what they've done is one of the things you can edit is they've brought Neptune in to start orbiting Saturn, which is a little bit of a problem for Saturn's rings. As you can see, they're starting to, starting to get a little bit warped there and you can uh, change uh, one of these options is the color mode. Uh, instead of looking at the actual color of these items, I will change to look at the velocity of these these objects. So you can see, uh, obviously, the velocity of the, the ring particles that are closer to Saturn are going much quicker, and these other ones being pulled out by Neptune are slowing down, and that's, and that's affecting their orbit. Uh, it's really quite cool. Uh, this is the, you know, a very light version of what they the type of simulations actual you know astronomers and physicists do for you know finding out things about how galaxies collide and uh, the way rings or the moon was formed or things like that so it's it's really quite cool and I'm gonna click the arrow to continue on whoop okay now we've uh, I kind of wanted to stick around that but I guess I'm going through the tutorial um, now we're looking at the nearest 300 stars to us so now we've zoomed out of the solar system, so now I don't believe, uh, if I zoom into the sun here, yeah, there's no planets or anything, none of the uh, the planets are being rendered, so we're just looking at the, the situation as to the closest 300 stars to the sun. Uh, we're kind of, the camera is rotating around, it doesn't exactly mean that these stars rotate around our sun, but uh, this is kind of a cool little simulation to show their relative motion to us. Then we can zoom out even further, and we're looking at the nearby galaxies to the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, right there we have an approximation as to where the Sun is. Uh, and once again, uh, even though the Milky Way galaxy has 4 billion stars, that doesn't mean that this is rendering 4 billion independent uh, you know, stars within this galaxy. It's just a, a rough simulation. And also a thing with Universe Sandbox, it doesn't take into account any of the dark matter, which has a huge effect on you know, the rotational and the gravity of a, of a particular galaxy, so it's it's a lot, it's still cool and it's still fun and it's pretty accurate, but it's not as overwhelming as, say, what the real astronomers or physicists need, like supercomputers and weeks or months of rendering time to sort of figure these problems out in real life, uh, figuring into account all these real uh, properties and dark matter and dark energy and all that things that I, I personally don't understand because I actually never took any physics classes in school. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, we zoom out here. We can see a whole bunch of other galaxies. There's Andromeda. And that's one of the things we're going to mess with in a couple seconds. But let's, uh, let's get out of the tutorial here. That kind of gives you a, a view. We can go from a solar system. Uh, we can go to a specific planet and its moons. We can zoom out to the stars. And then we can zoom out even further and start messing around with the the interactions of galaxies and clusters and things like that. So let me go back to our solar system. Actually, no, wait, I want to go back to the Earth and the Moon. Uh, so here, in this simulation, all we have is the Earth and the Moon. There's no Sun, there's no other planets, it's just we're looking at what happens between the Earth and the Moon. And one of the cool things you can do, I'm going to select the Earth, I'm going to go into Edit Mode, I believe, and then I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to add, uh, actually no, I wanted to do this to the moon, not Earth. Yeah, let's go to the, the moon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add rings to the moon, like Saturn's rings. Uh, so, and then we're going to see what happens to those rings due to the influence of the gravity from Earth. 
Uh, so here's all a bunch of different objects that you can add. I could add Venus next to the moon if I really wanted to. Uh, I could add another star if I want to do that would really mess things up. Uh, but what I'm going to do is add aha, a series of rings. So there we have somewhat the equivalent of Saturn's rings around the moon. <laughs> it's certainly interesting. Uh, as you can see, there's only, it's not as if real rings are millions and millions of individual dust particles and little pieces of ice, whatever. Uh, we've only got 1,000 particles. Uh, you, can, you can edit this, but I'm afraid it would kind of slow down my computer a little bit too much. Uh, so there we've got that. And what I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit, and then I'm going to get out of edit mode and back into the, the live mode. And we're running here, and we're running actually pretty slow. Uh, so I'm going to actually speed this simulation up, and I actually want to put that back on velocity. You can already see that the velocity of the particles facing Earth is different than those away from Earth. Uh, so there is definitely some gravity going on there. So let me change the speed of the simulation to uh, each frame right now equals two minutes of time. So I'm going to change that to one hour. So as you can see, it's moving much quicker now, the simulation. And you can see how the Earth's gravity just steals all the particles from the moon, because obviously Earth is, has much more mass than the moon. Uh, so yeah, the Earth stole all of the moon's uh, nice little rings there, and now it's pretty much become rings around Earth. And then there's all these other particles out here that get kind of strewn out into the solar system, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's it's kind of a cool simulation like that. Let me slow it down a little bit. Uh, you can look at all the, the velocity, we can look back at the realistic view. Uh, obviously things start to slow down here because there are those sort of Lagrange points that end up behind the moon and in front of the moon that I've talked about before in a Far Lands or Bust episode, but I won't get too much into it right now. Uh, so yeah, you can do all sorts of things like this. One more last thing I would like to do, which is probably the most exciting thing for me, is the galaxy collisions. And what this is going to be, hopefully this works, this is a simulation, let me slow it down a little bit because, ah, that's fine. A simulation between uh, the galaxy collision of Andromeda, which is our closest major galaxy, and our own Milky Way galaxy. Uh, this is actually going to happen in about four and a half billion years. Uh, Andromeda is getting slowly closer to us. Uh, the Milky Way is about 80%, I think, the mass of Andromeda, so really Andromeda is going to win, but as you're going to see in a few seconds, uh, neither is actually going to win, and it's actually going to come down to sort of a, a galaxy merger where all these stars are going to get mixed up. Uh, let me turn to the velocity, which is cool. Or was it acceleration I wanted? Yeah, acceleration is kind of cool. Obviously the stars closer to the center, uh, and this is part of where it doesn't take into account dark matter because that actually nullifies that. If there's dark matter it means everything uh, moves at a different rate with the galaxy rotation, but as you can see here, the Milky Way is starting to stretch out, and so is whoop whoop, so is Andromeda there. It's a really cool galaxy collision, and uh, what was I going to say? In as a another science fact of the day, uh, obviously, uh, what is it? Andromeda has like one trillion stars they've estimated, whereas the Milky Way has 400 billion. Uh, even though there's all those stars, in galaxy collisions like this. They say that it's completely unlikely that no two stars will actually collide with each other during this. That's simply because there's so much space in between each of the stars in the galaxy that it's just, you know, it's like they just whiff right through each other. Uh, it would be like, I guess, taking two hockey pucks and trying to hit them across an ice skating rink the size of Texas or something. You know, it's, it's something a little bit mind-boggling to think all these stars of these two giant galaxies are, you know, that are colliding. These galaxies are colliding, but none of the stars ever touch each other. Uh, they also estimate that even though if, like, the Earth or the Sun is, say, one of these stars that gets flung out, uh, it would really make no difference to our solar system because it's kind of its own uh, intact sort of system that has no effect as to the, where it is in relation to the center of the Milky Way or another galaxy, so uh, that's kind of cool. But, of course, uh, if this collision is to happen in about four and a half billion years, uh, the lifespan of our sun has only about five billion years left in it, so it's kind of debatable whether or not our solar system will be here or not when this happens. So, uh, But yeah, this is kind of a cool simulation. Uh, if you zoom out, you can kind of see it makes very pretty pictures. Uh, and then if you look at like Hubble pictures of actual uh, galaxy collisions, you can see similar features of all the arms getting stretched out and uh, neat features like this. So yeah, this is a really cool thing. 
Uh, there was a program, uh, I can't remember the name of it. it, I think it was called Gravity 3D. It's just a weird, you know, just a standalone EXE file, and you could adjust the parameters with like an attached config file, just a text file. Uh, but yeah, I think it was called Gravity 3D, I remember trying out a few years ago, that had similar uh, similar effects that you can change. You could view the acceleration or the mass and things like that. Uh, so that's what this reminds me a lot of. So this, I think, is probably the coolest part of uh, Universe Sandbox. Uh, if I was to give a first impressions or a review of this software, uh, I've had it, like I said, for about a week or so. I've played around it in a couple hours before recording this. I still tend to find uh, the programs like Celestia or Space Engine a little bit more enjoyable. I don't know if that's because I am into more of the scientific astronomy and it's more interesting to me to be able to zoom in and out and see what's actually happening in our universe. Uh, this is fun every once in a while to say, ooh, let's smash a moon into the Earth or something like that, but it doesn't... Uh, uh, and maybe I haven't explored as much into this, this program as I could be, and maybe I'll still play around with it and come back with another video if I do. But it, it, it isn't... Uh, as interesting, I guess I could say. Uh, it's fun, but it's not as interesting and there isn't as much to explore as, say, in Celestia Space Engine or the uh, the NASA Eyes on the Solar System. Uh, so so that's my kind of overall review. For five bucks, it, I'm fine with spending five bucks on this. Uh, like I said, it's available in Steam. Right now it's Windows only. I think they're trying to work on uh, porting it to the Mac or other systems, but right now it's a Windows only. Uh, and I'm sure you'd find that out if you load up Steam. Uh, but yeah, I think I've pretty much touched on everything here. Uh, let me speed up this simulation just to see what happens. Uh, how do I do this? Yeah, each each frame here equals 50,000 years. Uh, so these galaxy collisions are very slow things. <laughs> so let me actually run that up to 200,000 years so it goes a little bit faster. There we go. Another thing I've noticed, and you can see right here, when I sped things up, it seems to affect the the way because obviously you can see there's more stars being thrown out so it like seems to affect the velocity maybe instead of affecting the time it's actually affecting the speed of the simulation so I don't know if that has any effect on it I don't know I'm not a I'm not a physicist I don't know what this is all about but uh, let me change back to the uh, the realistic view so we can see our galaxies colliding uh, so yeah Fun stuff, eh? <laughs> uh, certainly thanks to everybody who was uh, suggesting I check this out. It certainly is right up my alley. Oh, there's our sun. Yep, it's getting thrown out of the out of both of the galaxies, but we'll be all right uh, if we, by any life whatsoever, is still on our planet at this point. Probably not, but uh, <laughs> there goes the sun. Here come the galaxy centers in for another collision. We Physics. Or not a collision, I guess another flyby. Woohoo! Uh, and uh, and yeah, this this has been uh, Universe Sandbox. I hope this was enjoyable. Please uh, like if you like this video and leave some comments, ask some questions. Uh, maybe if you've played around with this program a little bit more than I have, you can suggest me to check something out or do another video in the future of it. But in the meantime, while our galaxies are colliding and millions and millions of years are passing before our eyes, thanks for watching. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time.